this video, we're going to look at the confidence interval we built up previously for this um, EpiPen demand data. We're going to look at why this sample size needs to be so large to reduce this margin of error. And we're going to discuss um, kind of the failings of just a confidence interval as an estimate and think about what else we could possibly consider um, when we're trying to estimate, um, in this case, demand data. Okay, so what we have in this case is um, we have this EpiPen demand data and it varies over time. So what I previously stated was that we sampled 101 data. And that's not entirely untrue. What we did do was collect 101 months of demand data. Was that a properly collected sample though? Well, no, not really. Um, go check out the sampling sections for best practices there. Another thing to consider is that this is data that is collected over time. So one thing I very strongly recommend is just to go highlight all of your data and insert us a line chart if you want to model time data, um, just like this. And let's go have a look at this chart. So here it is. Um, <clears throat> a little note here, if your chart isn't displaying nicely for time series data, um, you can enter your dates using the date function in Excel, and that creates dates that are treated as dates everywhere in Excel. Um, <clears throat> okay, that's outside of the scope of this section, but nice to still see. So let's have a look at our data. Again, uh, a couple big problems, one of them being that this wasn't a random sample. Um, yeah, there, there's quite a few problems with calling this a sample of 101 demands. Uh, one of them being that there's lots of fluctuations over time. So one consideration is that if you want to try to guess what the demand would be, you should sample at that same point in time across, for example, um, similar locations that have these demands, something like that. Um, and you should also consider maybe handling different points in time um, individually. There is a lot of fluctuation over time um, with this data and simply modeling it with an average misses the mark most of the time. I'm just going to pause the video and put in a line that lies right on the average here and see how we do. Okay, so here's a line right at our average of 927. There are a handful of times where we're pretty close to that average, but most of the time in this set of data, we really miss the mark. Uh, we're quite far above that average and quite far below. Um, and again, we have these fluctuations over time. There are quite a few things you can do when you want to handle time series data. One simple one that I like in Excel is under data, it's the forecast sheet option. And uh, that builds up its own confidence interval. So I'm just gonna show you that very quickly here. Um, that is one possible way among many to try to um, do some sort of estimations on future demand when you have this time series data with this data collected over time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to show you really quickly here a very different type of confidence interval that could be built up for this data using forecast sheet here. So I just highlight both the date and the actual data, click on the data tab and forecast sheet, and it builds up these forecasts for me going forward. If you click on options, you can choose your confidence interval level. I have set it to 95% as well. Um, and there are lots of options you can select here 
I'm going to leave everything to the defaults and just click create, except for I'm just going to include the forecast statistics. Um, okay, so these values, I look at these in other, um, in other modules and other videos uh, on time series forecasting. But yeah, let's just have a quick look here at these results because a lot of this is outside of the scope of this section, but still nice to just see it really quickly. So here, if we took this time series data and used forecast sheet to build up the confidence interval, here are our bounds here and here for future forecasts as we go forward. We're somewhere between uh, almost 1800 and 200. So this method is not perfect either. <clears throat> Could be that the, the demand data is just really variable. Um, could be maybe we could find a better way to do future forecasts. Um, but what we know right now is that it is very tricky to get a nice narrow confidence interval for these demands, which can make it very difficult when you're trying to make decisions on how many of um, these units to order per month. Um, and just a simple confidence interval around the mean here really doesn't do justice to what's really kind of happening under the hood with this data set. Um, <clears throat> and just collecting the data over time, the way we did and quote unquote sampling it wasn't truly following the best practices of sampling as well. In future videos, we'll look at some examples that are better suited to building up confidence intervals. Thanks for watching.